The blockchain space is booming with untapped opportunities to make life-changing amounts of money. But on the flip side, it's also teeming with opportunities for you to lose all your newfound wealth in a single instant. And today I want to talk about a blockchain developer who made $1 million with their trading bot in a single transaction and then turned around and lost everything in just an hour later. So trust me, this is one of the craziest stories you're going to hear all week inside of crypto. So you definitely want to pay attention to this video, watch it all the way through. I'm going to talk about what you need to know, how to find these types of similar opportunities, but ultimately what you can learn from this and how to protect yourself from having the same thing happen to you. I'm going to talk about all oh, this as a blockchain developer myself with trading by experience just like this. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then definitely head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about the blockchain developer who makes over a million dollars instantly with their trading bot in a single transaction and then turns around and loses everything within an hour. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about this, break this down. I'm gonna look at this actual address here on chain. You can verify everything by looking at the actual blockchain itself and looking through the transactions and telling a story of how this happened. And I'm also gonna use this tweet thread from Robert Miller as an additional resource to help explain what's happening here. All right, so let's first talk about what this developer was doing in the first place, okay? So again, you can see their address here. We can look at all these transactions. I'm gonna look at them step by step and then break this down. But essentially, this person was creating a trading bot that was arbitraging between two different cryptocurrency exchanges, okay? So what is that? Well, you know, there's all types of different blockchain-based trading bots out there. There's ones that try to predict future cryptocurrency prices, all right? And then there's blockchain-based trading bots that essentially try to trade between two exchanges and, you know, take advantage of price discrepancies that exist right now and buy on one exchange and sell on the other. And they basically look like this. You create your own smart contracts that are put on the network and then you have, you know, it hooks into one exchange and then the other exchange and it just buys and sells, you know, instantly in a single transaction whenever those exchange prices fall out of sync. So that's really what this person was doing. They're running an MEV bot. Okay, so they also have mempool access. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. And you can see this uh, bot here. This is their uh, history here on the chain. And it's got over 220,000 transactions, which most of which were arbitrage trading transactions. Okay. Until, you know, uh, one day they did this arbitrage we'll talk about here in a second and then lost everything. So well, let's start off with the transaction where they made over a million dollars in a single transaction. That's this one pulled up right here. You can see uh, the final tally here was for 906 Ether. Okay, it's over $1.2 million at the time I record this video. So it came from an initial arbitrage opportunity that came up on the blockchain. Okay, so we'll see. Um, let's look at Robert's description of what happened here with this transaction that preceded it. Okay. So he's saying basically uh, earlier today, he tweeted this out whenever the transaction happened. You know, some poor soul tried to sell $1.8 million in CUSD, that's Compound's version of USDC, uh, on Uniswap version two, and they got $500 in return. Okay, so they turned $1.8 million into $500. Uh, so you can see that transaction right here. So um, the result of this is that it created a massive arbitrage opportunity okay and that's one of the reasons you see arbitrage happen in the first place is some some anomaly happens on the chain which causes you know two exchanges to really fall to sync unfortunately this looks like an error where the user didn't realize they were going to lose money but then uh you know queue in the arbitrage bot that we're talking about in this case you know they instantly see this opportunity because they're essentially watching the uh, mempool and then they're back running this transaction to do the arbitrage and that's what we see here which resulted in this you know profit of over you know one million dollars so uh let's just talk about that so essentially what happens is you know this person the person has a very competitive bot which basically they have access to the ethereum mempool which is just the area where the transactions go before they're actually you know put on chain and so you know it can detect a new transaction that would cause a price change in this mempool and essentially include their transaction just right after that in order to do that arbitrage so that it all goes in the same block and it happens instantly before other people can detect that this block has been mined or validated in this case uh, and then you know execute upon that so it's a pretty sophisticated bot that was able to do this all right and actually pull off that opportunity now the real problem is uh they lost uh this and more uh, just over an hour later where they lost over 1,100 Ether or 1,100 Ether from somebody else who exploited their bot. So let's let's talk about how that happened. So what happened here is the person's smart contract 
that was responsible for executing these arbitrage opportunity was compromised, okay? So smart contracts themselves are a huge security vulnerability, okay? When you're talking about, you know, any blockchain application, there's always smart contract risk. Those smart contracts get hacked. In this case, this is somebody's trading bot smart contract they created that was actually exploited by somebody else, you know, and took the money. So um, let's just explain that because whenever you're creating a trading bot, it's got multiple aspects to it, okay? So in the basic trading bots will have two main aspects. One is the bot that actually watches for opportunities in the marketplace. But whenever it's time to go trade, it needs you know a smart contract to actually execute the trade because that's the value proposition. You have a smart contract created with Solidity that hooks into each you know different cryptocurrency exchange and actually facilitates the token transfers, you know, buying and selling. If there's flash loans involved, uh, then it can take out flash loans to do that trade as well. And so this particular bot did have flash loans. So what is that? Well, essentially, flash loans are where you can borrow cryptocurrency uh, as long as you pay it back in the same transaction. In you know, many cases, millions of dollars of cryptocurrency or more so that you don't need any money in order to execute these trades. And that's what this bot was doing. Basically, it was just looking at opportunities in the marketplace, taking out a flash loan, doing the buy and sell, paying the loan back and taking the profit, just like we saw in that previous example. So in this particular case, you know, this bot had a smart contract, you know, that, that did the trades. And that smart contract hooked into a particular flash loan provider called DYDX, okay? And DYDX is basically a, uh, it's a derivatives trading platform on top of Ethereum. Uh, their protocol lets you take out flash loans and use them in your own applications as well. And they have a specification for how you implement that in your smart contracts. And whenever you do that, basically, they're going to have a function that lets you take out the flash loan, but whenever you create the smart contract itself, okay, you have to implement a very specific function that on your contract in order for people, in order, sorry, in order for the pool that you're borrowing from to get those funds to you, and then you can pay them back in the same transaction. That's how a flash loan works. And so this is an example right here of some real code that's implemented inside of a flash loan trading bot, okay? This call function right here is a specification from the DYDX flash loan provider that you have to have this on your smart contract in order to uh, receive the money from the flash loan and then also facilitate, you know, paying the money back to the flash loan provider in order to actually execute that transaction. So, you know, this smart contract had one of these, but the problem is there is something inside of here where essentially you can put in any type of arbitrary call data into this function as an argument. And then that that call data can be executed inside of your smart contract. And so what does that mean? Well, essentially, you know, whenever you're creating Solidity smart contracts, you're usually writing, you know, code one by one where the, you know, a programmer is writing uh, human readable commands that are executed into that smart contract. But with Solidity, you can actually have these arbitrary lines that, you know, people can pass in, uh, you know, any information they want to that will execute. And so if you're a sophisticated developer, you could inject malicious code into that smart contract itself. It's pretty easy to protect against that type of thing because you can have safeguards in your function that say, hey, only specific people can call these functions like you see right here. It's got an only pool access, you know, modifier. But there could have some arbitrary code injection to this. But the good news is only the pool that you're borrowing from could do that. Now, if you don't have that function protected and then anybody can inject malicious code into your application, then that's where the real problem comes into play. And that's exactly what happened with this particular bot here. <laughs> okay, so essentially with this transaction, uh, what somebody did was they just had an approval message and they put it, they injected it into that particular smart contract. And then in the next transaction, they were essentially able to drain all of the tokens from that smart contract to their own wallet. <laughs> okay, so let's just recap what happened there. So, you know, uh, essentially, the contract held a lot of the funds that they had received from arbitrage. In this case, this is Wrap, Ether, or Weath. Okay, so, you know, basically, instead of going to the arbitrager's wallet, they were held inside the smart contract themselves. And with ERC-20 tokens, you know, there's an approval function, which basically lets other people spend cryptocurrency on your behalf. Like if you're going to trade on Uniswap, you always have to approve your tokens before you do the swap because Uniswap actually takes them out of your wallet in order to do that transfer. In this case, um, you know, this code allowed other people to have arbitrary, you know, uh, code injected into the code. And so basically what they did is that, hey, just approve somebody else's wallet address, all the weath, and then boom, they just instantly drained all the weath from their smart contract after they did that arbitrage for over a million dollars and they lost everything basically instantly. All right, so that's an overview of how this developer earned $1 million with their arbitrage trading bot and then turned around and lost an hour later, <laughs> okay? So, you know, what's an important thing to learn from this? 
Well, I've started talking about you know smart contract security so much on this channel. Okay, I've got several uh, different you know videos pinned to my YouTube homepage talking about how to audit smart contracts and how to hack them so that you can you know help other people you know save money, not so that you can you know steal money yourself, but also how you can protect yourself when you're creating your own bots. So if you are creating trading bots, then you that's another reason that you need to understand about smart contract security. So what are some easy ways that you can protect yourself from this type of thing? Uh, well, first of all, if you have any type of function that lets anybody have, it basically accepts any type of arbitrary execution inside of the uh, function itself, well, then you, of course, need to guard those functions so that nobody else but you can call them. <laughs> it's, it's pretty basic. Uh, but beyond that, another best practice is like, how, you know, holding funds inside of your smart contract itself can, can pose a pretty serious attack vector for somebody being able to hack that smart contract in the first place and actually take funds out of it or you being sort of your own worst enemy and somehow accidentally bricking your contract where you cannot withdraw the funds uh, from it back to your wallet yourself. And that's a pretty easy low-hanging fruit that you could implement in your own uh, strategies if you're trying to do something just like this. All right, so that's all I got for today. Again, this is one of the craziest stories you're going to hear all week in crypto. If you like this video, then make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to be courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, actually, I should become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. Thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.